Hey, I'm Matt from mastersketchup.com and I just went through all 68 available live components on the 3D warehouse in order to try and reverse engineer the different types of parameters that we can control using live components. So in this video, I'm gonna show you 13 distinct parameters that we'll likely be able to control once we can author our own live components. So live components are special components that provide an interface in which you can customize certain parameters and settings. And I did a brief overview video on live components when they were first announced. But in this video, I really wanna deep dive into the specific parameters and features that I've uncovered by closely examining all 68 of the available live components that were created by the SketchUp team. So I'll have a link in the uh, of the overview video that I did as well as a link to the 3D warehouse where you can view and interact with all of the components that I'm gonna be showing you in this video. And you can find a, uh, those links down in the description below. Now I should also say that at this point, there is no ability to create your own live components. So we only have the ones that have been made available to us by the SketchUp team. However, they have stated that in the future, they will be giving us the ability to create our own live components. So this video should provide a glimpse into the types of things that we'll be able to do and sort of highlight some of the differences from the dynamic components feature that is currently available in SketchUp. Now, remember, uh, all of this is speculation based off of my own personal investigation into all of these uh, live components, so just keep that in mind. All right, so there are a few simple, obvious things that I wanna get out of the way right out of the gate. Um, so let's start with number one, and that's the ability to change color. So pretty straightforward, you can change the color of materials or certain faces on a live component. Now, this can be done by either providing a preset number of material options in a drop-down menu, or you can have a color palette from which you can pick pretty much any solid color that you want. Number two is being able to toggle the visibility of various objects. So for example, um, this would be good for providing different cabinet pull options or doorknob options. So basically with this type of drop down menu, it's basically either enabling or disabling a specific 3D object instead of it being something where, you know, it's parametrically changing geometry. Um, so I think it's giving you the ability to literally just hide or make visible specific pre-made objects, which by the way, I'm, it's something I'm kind of still curious about um, as well, whether or not the entire model will need to be kind of like built parametrically in whatever this user interface is gonna look like, or if you're gonna have the ability to import like 3D models that you've already pre-made in SketchUp or some other program. I have a feeling that you're gonna be able to do that because it seems weird that uh, you'd have to parametrically build every single aspect of the live component. Um, but you know, we're gonna have to just wait and see. Number three, another obvious one is simply changing dimensional parameters of various objects in the live component. So a very simple example of this would be this uh, steel column and beam live component where you can just adjust some of the sliders to select a width, a height, or length, and you can even adjust like the flange thickness and web thickness. So this is kind of a simple example showing you how you can assign parameters um, that the user can control using sliders. But I also wanna mention that you can actually click the length value directly that's above the slider and manually type in a measurement. Now, in addition to being able to control linear dimensions, there are also some interesting parameters in some of these models, um, such as this suspended light feature where we can adjust the arc radii. So this entire shape looks like it's generated parametrically based on these values. And another example is the acoustic ceiling panel live component. 
Clearly, this is entirely generated parametrically, and you can control the amplitude, wavelength, and fall off to affect the shape of each panel. And if we look at this bench and enable curved mode, we can see another example where a radius slider and rotation slider gives us control over the curve of a component. And that brings me to number four, which is complex curves. So if you look at this bench here, the supports are not just like a simple arc. Um, it's a complex curve with control points that we can have control over. And the reason I know this is if we adjust the seat profile slider here, the bench completely changes shape. So clearly we have some sort of control over complex curves and control points that are used to draw those curves. And another thing you might notice, uh, which is example number five, is that the slats on the bench appear to follow a profile path um, of the supports. So I would say that there's gotta be some sort of feature that allows you to draw objects relative to a complex path. So the slats are following a complex curve um, based on a certain interval of spacing, uh, so on and so forth. So that is really cool. All right, number six is changing the position of an object based on the size or other parameter for that matter of another object. So for example, in the shower live component, when you lower the height of the shower, the shower head position is lowered as well in order to stay within the range of the bar. So basically being able to attach ranges for object positions relative to other objects. Um, so everything just adjusts accordingly when you make a change to a single slider. And feature number seven is being able to control the rotation of an object. So you can see this pretty much in every window or door live component where there's a slider for you to adjust the open angle. So like casement windows, awning windows, and hopper windows, as well as doors, you can adjust how much they open. Now, I'm not sure if this is just rotating the object around uh, a specific axis from the component's origin, or if you're able to define a secondary pivot point specifically for this rotation control, but clearly you're able to define the pivot axis position in order to define the rotation, as well as being able to set minimum and maximum angles. But if we take a look at this bifold uh, live component a little more closely, we can see feature number eight, which is allowing connected joints between different objects. So like when you open or close this bifold door, all of the different leaves that make up the door stay connected as it opens and closes. Now we can also see this feature on the umbrella in the outdoor table set as well as this articulating lamp live component. So clearly there's some way to create joints or connect objects to one another and define a rotational axis between those two objects, which makes it really cool and, and makes me wonder if perhaps we'll see some sort of animation functionality similar to what we have with dynamic components. Moving on to number nine is being able to define a specific quantity and having objects being be added or removed and sometimes resized based on the parameters that control that live component. So with the acoustic wall panels, for instance, instead of defining an overall length and height of the panels, um, instead you just define uh, the panel size itself plus the panel spacing and then you tell it exactly the number of panels you want vertically and horizontally, and then um, panels will either be removed or added based on your input. Now, similar to that, but different enough to have its own number. So number 10 is automatic quantity calculation based off of either a certain interval or total length. So you see this really commonly in things like fences where you have pickets that are evenly spaced between sets of posts. So you typically uh, would be able to define the length of the distance between the posts or like the overall uh, distance of the length of the fence. Um, and then parametrically, it'll calculate the number of pickets 
and have them, you know, evenly spaced between those two posts. But there are a lot of examples of this where things are just sort of, you know, evenly spaced out depending on the total length of something. So this is a pretty common behavior in live components. All right, so number 11 is intersections. Now, I, I wasn't quite sure what to call this because, you know, I, I this is all speculation, but basically what I'm trying to describe is this specific behavior where you can clearly see two different shapes almost intersecting with each other um, and like one is kind of cutting the other one or I don't know, maybe it's maybe it's not even a intersection. Maybe it's just like a parametric constraint or something. So this, this kind of reminds me of a feature in Fusion 360 where you can kind of have a line and then you add a modifier to have that line or the endpoint extend until it intersects a, another line. So no matter the position of the line, because of that modifier, it's always going to extend until it intersects the second line. So perhaps that's what's happening here. Although again, this whole video is, is pretty much speculation. So we'll have to just wait and see exactly how this uh, is done. Now, number 12 is iteration modifiers, where you can modify a property value with each iteration of an object copy. So the suspended feature light, for instance, appears to parametrically draw these rings, and each copy of the ring has an incrementally larger diameter, and the rotation of each ring is unique as well. So it appears that you'll be able to run calculations during each iteration of an object in order to produce a different result with each copy. And along those same lines is number 13, which is the ability to skip iterations. So if we look at the scaffolding live component, there's a special section called the circulation bay, and you can control at which location that circulation bay occurs. So if we look at all the other sections, they're clearly identical. So these are just iterations on a single set of instructions, but the ability to define the exact location of the circulation bay shows that you can interrupt an iteration and have a different outcome occur. All right, so those are my 13 features that I suspect we're gonna have when we uh, are given the ability to create our own live components. Again, I'll say it again, this is all speculation, uh, just based on my research, but I am sure I haven't caught everything. So if you've been playing around with these live components and you've discovered or have a theory on a feature that we might have um, with the authoring suite or the authoring interface, leave a comment below. And uh, I, I'm really curious to see what you think about this. And um, so that's basically it for this video. Uh, thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you haven't done so already. And I'll see you in the next video.